It's been a long wait, but it's finally here. And I'm beyond excited to share my thoughts with you all today because this is the global version of one of the best smartphones on the planet, the Honor Magic 4 Pro. And the main reason for my excitement is the fact that this version, the global version, is jam-packed with full Google services out the box. Other than the glory of Google, the Magic 4 Pro is littered with insane specs, such as an incredibly good camera system, a 120 hertz 6.81 inch LTPO quad curved OLED display that boasts 1920 hertz pulse width modulation dimming. It also has an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, 3D face unlock, a 4,600 milliamp hour battery, 100 watt wide and 100 watt wireless charging. This is Tech Nick and this is my unboxing and full review of the Honor Magic 4 Pro global version. The Magic 4 Pro comes in five main color variants, that being a vegan leather orange color. You can also pick it up in gold, white, black, which are all glass, or the color that I have with me here today known as cyan, which is also gloss. It kind of looks like a pearlescent finish. It's quite glossy under light, but very matte-like, anti-glare-like when it's not getting struck by light. We have that Eye of Muse camera module at the back and inside this gorgeous beast, I guess you could say, sits a 4,600 milliamp hour battery, 100 watt wide, 100 watt wireless charging, a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset, LPDDR5 RAM, and UFS 3.1 storage. It has a glass front, aluminum frame, and a glass shield or vegan leather back, not to mention it is IP68 dust and water certified. Inside that large camera module at the back sits a 50 megapixel ultra wide cam, a 50 megapixel main sensor, and a 64 megapixel periscope telephoto sensor, not to mention there's also a 3 3D TOF laser focusing sensor, as well as a flicker sensor. 50 megapixel native ultra wide looks pretty darn good. Bidding it down 12.5 kind of crops out a bit, looks fantastic. 250 megapixel main over here and cropping in a little bit with the 12.5 megapixel bind mode. We also have 64 megapixel native 3.5 times optical periscope as well as bending that down, looks fantastic. We can do 10 times hybrid zoom, looks just as good if you ask me. 30 times digital, we also get 50 times digital and the max is 100 times digital on that periscope cam and it actually makes out pretty decent shots here. We have that 50 megapixel ultra wide once again Bending it down pulls it back a little bit. Looks pretty fantastic in terms of color accuracy. 50 megapixel main looks far superior when you bend it down to 12.5 megapixels, thanks to AI. We also have the 64 megapixel periscope and looks once again even better when bending down to 16 megapixels. And we can use the main sensor, switch it to the ultra wide and get a pretty incredible macro shot too. We also have this thing called aperture mode and I've set it to an aperture 4.0 over here with a two time zoom, looks pretty decent. And we also have portrait mode, taking a picture of me at 1x and at 2x, but there's no portrait mode utilizing the telephoto sensor. There's no 8K video over here, but we do have 4K 60 FPS at a regular aspect ratio of 16 by nine using the main sensor. It looks absolutely fantastic. It could use with a bit of stabilization, but otherwise it's crisp and clear and packed with detail. We also have 4K 30 FPS using the ultra wide at the regular 16 by nine aspect ratio. Once again, looks fantastic, though it could do with some stabilization once again, and it is capped at 30 FPS whether you're using the main 16 by nine or the stretched out 21 by nine aspect ratio for a movie like appeal over here. The ultra wide is capped at 4K and at 30 FPS. It can't do 4K and 60, though we can do 4K 60 using the main at that wonderful 21 by nine aspect ratio for you filming nerds out there. And it looks absolutely phenomenal. But what looks even better is the fact that we can record 4K 60 FPS, 21 by nine aspect ratio log mode so that you can edit this to your liking in post effects. And it does an absolutely superb job if you ask me. We also have 4K HDR 10 plus mode, though it is limited to 24 frames per second, whether you're recording at 4K or 1080p. It looks pretty good, and I'm sure you can do a couple things with it in post-processing as well. And we do have a bunch of lookup table filters over here. There are eight of them in total, and they look pretty fantastic, which should suit certain needs, should you decide to film. We also have 4K 60 FPS using the main sensor at that 21 by nine aspect ratio, 
night. It does a decent job at 60 FPS, not as bright as I'd like it to be. That's what 30 FPS is for, as you would think on the ultra wide sensor, but it doesn't do a great job. Still actually does a better job than I saw with the Magic 4 Ultimate. That kind of gave off a lightning effect where this doesn't do that. This seems to be more controlled and it kind of controls the lighting a bit better as well, even when at the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. 16 by 9 aspect ratio with 4K 60 FPS using the main looks better than it did with the 21 by 9 aspect ratio. It really does pop. I guess you could say with color at night, it is a pretty dark night, but we do have super night mode, but unlike the ultimate edition, this is capped at 1080p and 24 FPS, where that can do 4K 30 super night on, but this still looks nice and bright, though it struggles to control lights. We do have night mode off over here using the ultra wide bin down, of course, night mode on, it kind of controls the light a bit with the main sensor. It looks fantastic with no night mode. Turn on the night mode a tad bit better. Crops in a little bit over there. And when you go to 3.5 times zoom, it's actually digital since it does not utilize the periscope whether night mode is off or on. And 10 times hybrid uses the periscope, but turn on night mode and it goes back to the main sensor. Very strange though, 30 times does use the periscope as well as 50 times and 100 times, but none of them utilize a night mode option. The back cameras are a tad bit of a mixed bag. Still some of the best photos and videos I've ever taken in my entire life. And on the right hand side, we do have a power button above that, a volume rocker. And right at the bottom of the phone, we do have a dual SIM 5G tray. Unfortunately, no expandable storage over here. And there is only one version that comes in at 256 gigs in the global market. We have a USB 3.1 type C port at the bottom. And alongside that, we have the first dual stereo speaker, one at the bottom, one at the top, both paired up with DTSX ultra audio. And we have an IR blaster alongside that. At the top, found inside that pull shaped notch alongside the 3D TOF sensor sits a 12 megapixel ultra wide selfie camera with a hundred degrees field of view. The ultra wide pics come out fantastic and zooming into one X cropped in, I guess you could say shooting to portrait mode looks absolutely phenomenal as well. And shooting back to it, I must add though, there is no portrait mode option for the ultra wide only for the one X so cropped in, but nevertheless, it looks great in terms of edge detection. What's up guys, Technic here recording a 4K selfie video on the brand new Honor Magic 4 Pro. Now this is of course the global version and the selfie video, get this, can record video at ultra wide 100 degrees field of view and it can do 4K 30 FPS. Though it is limited to 30 FPS, the 1080p mode can go all the way up to 60 FPS. And just like I mentioned, here is the 1080p 60 FPS mode. Let me know which one you prefer as well as what you think of the audio and video quality when using the selfie cam on the Honor Magic 4 Pro. Switching back to 4K 30 FPS using the selfie camera at night at ultra wide 100 degrees field of view looks okay, I guess you could say. And taking photos looks marginally better than video at night with night mode off or on because really don't notice any of a difference when night mode is switched on using the selfie cam. And taking a portrait shot, there is no night mode option, though it doesn't really matter because of what I just said. There is a flash mode option and it kind of brightens up my face and dims the background a bit. The selfie photos do come out looking phenomenal, a lot better than other flagships I've personally tested. And powering on the device, getting to the always, always on display, we do have an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor this time around. It is the generation two, the same one that we saw in the Samsung Galaxy S22 lineup earlier this year. It is super snappy and you can even use it when there's water on it. And we do have 3D face unlock sitting alongside that 100 degree selfie camera and it is very secure, much like you would see from something like an iPhone 13 Pro Max. So you have two great security measures here. One being very bulletproof ultrasonic fingerprint unlock and another one being 3D face unlock, which you barely ever see in Android smartphones. And speaking of incredible, we do have a 6.81 inch LTPO OLED quad curve display. It has 1 billion colors. It has 100% DCI-P3 color gamma rating. It is 10 bit, supports HDR10 plus content, has a thousand nits of peak brightness and has an independent MEMC display chip. It's not quite full HD plus, it's not quite WQHD plus, it sits somewhere in between with a PPI 460, which is still pretty high in my books. And it also houses a custom made LTPO, I guess you could say LTPO 2.0 text since it can refresh between one and 120 Hertz, which is fantastic. It's nice and fluid when you're scrolling around or when you're gaming, we'll get to gaming a little bit later. And of course we also have a 360 Hertz touch sampling rate, but that is not the best thing about this display. Reason being is that this actually has 1920 Hertz pulse width modulation dimming, which is the highest ever seen on a smartphone with an LED LTPO panel. Comparing it to the iPhone 13 Pro Max on the right hand side, which has 480 Hertz pulse width modulation dimming, it really does make a difference in terms of minimizing your eye strain, which is fantastic. Not to mention its brightness peaks out pretty much at the same 
level as the iPhone, which is fantastic. And we do have Android 12 skinned over Magic UI 6 over here, but this time I finally have a global version of their flagship device, the Magic 4 Pro, and it is littered with Google services. Yes, it has Google Discover on the left-hand side. There is Google Assistant. It's rooted straight into settings and the Google Play Store works fantastically too. Not to mention, we still have the great features that we see in the Chinese model, such as being able to shrink and enlarge folders and be able to tap on an icon in a folder without actually having to go into the folder which is something I wish all other software skins could do. We do have the draw as well as the notification tray over here, and it is littered with customization options so that you can suit your phone to your needs. Not to mention we are kitted with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset in here, which is still pretty beefy. And when paired with the high performance mode option found inside the battery settings, we got a score of 960,650 points in Antutu. A score of 1202 single core and 3323 multi core in Geekbench version 5 a maxed out score in 3D Mark Wildlife and a whopping 2,613 points with an average of 15.6 FPS in 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme. Benchmarks aside, this phone can surely do more than just run some benchmarks. Let's talk about gaming over here for a second. Jumping into Genshin Impact over here, probably the most graphically demanding game you can download on the Play Store at the moment. It does cap out at 60 FPS though, so even though this has 120 hertz display, it can't quite reach that potential because the game has an actual FPS cap. And we're getting an average of 48 FPS, which is actually four FPS higher than the average I've seen in other Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 phones I've personally tested. Though it did have quite a few spikes dropping down as low as 17 FPS, but it reached a max FPS of 60, which is once again four higher than the average of tested. Moving on to Bullet Force over here, no FPS cap, so it can reach the potential of this display, that being 120 hertz or 120 FPS. We got an average of 120 FPS, a min of 113, which is higher than the average min I've tested, and a max of 120, which is absolutely fantastic for a non-gaming centric device such as this. But what about the audio? Let's go ahead and listen to those dual stereo speakers. The Honor Magic 4 Pro is Honor's first flagship smartphone that I am seriously considering using as my daily driver. And no, it's not just because it comes with full Google services support out of the box. It has one of the best displays I have ever used period. It's very bright, pops with 1 billion colors. Its quad curved design is littered with pixels thanks to its high resolution. It uses a custom made LTPO technology which delivers refresh rates between 1 and 120 hertz and most importantly it packs in the world's highest PWM dimming on an LTPO smartphone display at a whopping 1920 hertz. It's rocking a new ultrasonic fingerprint sensor that's seriously snappy and houses a 3D facial recognition system making it extremely impressive in in terms of biometric security. Alongside that 3D top sensor, inside the pull shaped notch sits an incredible 100 degree field of view ultra wide selfie camera that takes superb photos and can even shoot 4K videos. But the real eye catcher here is that massive eye of Muse camera system on its back, which takes impeccable photos and videos regardless of the sensor being used. Its design is a serious head turner thanks to its bright pearlescent like glossy finish, and inside the showstopper sits a relatively large, 4,600 milliamp hour battery that can be juiced up in no time thanks to extremely fast 100 watt wired and 100 watt wireless charging, making the Honor Magic 4 Pro a serious contender for phone of the year. Not only because Honor finally has a flagship device that packs in full Google services, but because the Honor Magic 4 Pro houses all of the best specs and features that actually matter.